of the year for Johnson, second of the game for Pittsburgh, and the Steelers have now intercepted 17 passes as a team this year. This is their 10th game. Flag thrown from deep down the field back toward the line of scrimmage as Foster carried and gained a yard. For the Steelers, that's their eighth penalty of the half. And there's such a tendency to hold in that. Cooper's an outstanding blocker, but he's got to look out for those hands. Will Tower shaking his head as the walk-off brought it back to the 28-yard line. First and 20. 2.47 remaining in the half. O'Donnell lost it, but got it back. And now he's down in the arms of Spindler back at the 18-yard line. The exchange, something went, something happened right away here. That ball bounced up. He was lucky he got it back, and he should have sat down right there. Now he tries to make something happen out of nothing, and that's usually a disaster. He just pulled out of there a little bit too soon. Again, the, the smart play would have been just to stop. Now, this is a this is a heck of a drive for Pittsburgh, but it's going the wrong direction. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, I, this second quarter has turned into a, a bit of a comedy of errors for both teams. Your Detroit should be thinking about a timeout. No, I, I, I don't think so just yet. I think you want to see what happens here. They go to the draw to Foster, and he is driven down by George Jamison. And now Detroit does get the quick timeout before the two-minute warning at 2.07. This game began with snow falling. This game began with snow falling in rather serious fashion. Now it's a mostly sunny afternoon in downtown Pittsburgh. And the Steelers will be looking at that view quite regularly the rest of the way, including this game. They have five of their last seven games at home, and they're already in first place in the AFC Central with their 6-3 and three record by one game over Houston and Cleveland. Third down and 26. O'Donnell sets up the screen. Leroy Thompson touching the ball for the first time today. And he's down well short of the first down. And the two-minute warning stops the clock. So the Lions will have another chance trailing by three as we approach halftime. Field this one. Gray from the 21. Flag thrown, two flags down, three down. And Gray down at the 32, but three officials saw the same blocking infraction. It looked like it was Melvin Jenkins who was the guilty party. I really think that's uh, just stupidity. You have that great a return man, as we said earlier, and here they do again. It's like they're taking him right out of the game. Uh, Holding number 83 on the return. First down. Aubrey Matthews called for the hold. He and Jenkins were tackling, blocking rather, the only man who was close to Gray as he was fielding the punt. That's Frank Gans, the special teams coach, who isn't very happy about it. Well, it's it's just a it's just not a very good thing to, to deny yourself such field position. They've got a minute 50 left in this half, and they got a chance to get a tie. Uh, they've got one one timeout. They've got to move the ball about 60 yards now instead of 40 or 35 yards to get a field goal. Back at the 13, they do come out with three wide receivers. Setting up a screen for Sanders. He broke one tackle, gained yardage, but now a flag is thrown back at the line of scrimmage. has not been a cleanly played first half. Both teams hurt severely by penalties throughout the first 30 minutes. Illegal block, number 62, offense, still first down. The center, Blake Miller, called for the illegal block. Coming up on the NFL Today Halftime Report, Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from today's NFL action. Well, Sean, I think they've taken themselves out of any real chance to produce any kind of a two-minute drive here. Uh, they have to be very careful now. An interception, they've already had two interceptions. 
So just trying to put that football down the field gives Pittsburgh a better chance to get points here than it does for Detroit. 135 yards now in penalties between the two teams. The Steelers have one timeout remaining if they're thinking about stopping it. Sanders brought it across the 10, and that's all. And now a timeout is called by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, with the chance to, to make their offense go. On second and 13, they are going to try to throw. Kramer. Completed pass. Perryman out of bounds, a yard short of the first down. Well, so much for my strategy. <laughs> there, there they went back and threw it and, and, and made it. And uh, now they give themselves a chance for a first down. Their third down and about one. Ooh, Kansas City now 28 to nothing up on Washington. Green Bay the lead at the half. And Greg and Terry in a minute and 26 seconds will give you the details on all the scores that you are seeing. I was with you on that one. I would have been in full agreement. The wise thing to do was run some time. Don't let Pittsburgh get it back in good field position. Now the Lions on third down and one. Broken play. Kramer in trouble and down back at the 18 yard line. Here again, they got to substitute in for Barry Sanders. He doesn't get to play very much. So he's at a place where he said, man, I'm not sure which side I'm supposed to line up on. Troy Stratford uh, uh, just, I think, blew at that time. Now the Steelers are going to get the football back. I think Detroit's going to just sit on this football and let that clock go down as long as they can. They don't. They snapped it with 11 seconds left. That certainly doesn't make any sense. Woodson started at his 37. Melvin Jenkins caught him from behind at the 42. A 45-yard punt by Jim Arnold. A five-yard return by Woodson. 46 seconds left for the Steelers to do something. Well, again, the use of, of the clock is so important in this game when it gets down close. And it's not just using it when you have the football. It's denying the other guy a chance to use it uh, for his purposes. Detroit did not do a very good job of that. And they left Pittsburgh enough time to try to make something happen. Steelers lead 10 to 7. O'Donnell throws complete. Davenport got drilled by Ray Crockett. Steelers in the hurry up the gain to the 49 yard line. The pickup of seven, second down and three, 30 seconds left in the half. Four man rush. Pass is dropped by Didio. In his NFL debut, he caught two earlier and was hurt, taken off, had x rays, which proved negative on his neck. And upon returning, the first time they threw it to him, he dropped it. Well, he made two good catches for them in a crowd. That time he was in the middle again, and he might have heard that uh, those famous footsteps coming, but uh, he, he's got himself a real opportunity, you know, to come on the squad and be the target of three passes in the first half, and he's taken advantage of it. Nice. Time. Jeff Graham out of action today with a sprained ankle. White Stone also hobbled one of the receivers to Pittsburgh. O'Donnell, some nifty moves. He went over the line. Now he's back behind the line and threw an interception. Sheldon White brought it back to the 41-yard line. Well, it's so seductive when you make a big play off a scramble to say, hey, I can do it every time. Here you see O'Donnell start to scramble. He's got that ball wandering around. He's really losing control of himself. He went over the line of scrimmage, came back, just threw it up in the air, and, and something bad is going to happen a lot of times there. Again, that's where he experienced the old veteran. Uh, you know, he just needs experience to learn how not to do that. Everybody's trying to keep the other guy in the ball game. it looks mm. like in here. Now, Detroit's got a chance to uh, complete a, a pass to the boundary. They got 11 seconds, and that's what they've got to be thinking. Throw it out somewhere, get a, get a chance for a field goal. Hanson, the kicker, has a strong leg, and he is kicking with the wind at his back. Kramer dumped. Flag thrown. What a big surprise that is. This has been a horribly played first half by these two teams. 
Well, the officials are, go are going to be the guys that need the rest at halftime <laughs> in this game because uh, they've been working hard. And uh, again, when you're not a very good football player, you tend to try to find an advantage. You try to be off balance a little bit. This is what happens. Holding, 67, offense is declined. Second down. Ken Dallafor, guilty of holding. They took the sack. For the loss back to the 47 yard line, seven seconds left in the half. Lions do have one timeout remaining. Second and 15. Kramer. Green. Now he needs to score because he's just run out the half and he lost the football. Kramer tripped up Gerald Williams and Kramer was the last line of defense for Detroit. Sean, that's the worst behavior of, of controlling the game in the last two minutes that I've seen for a long time. Both teams were looked like they were trying to get the other guy to score rather than score themselves. Really an ugly half and at the end of the first half the score is Pittsburgh 10 and Detroit 7. Barry Sanders rushed for 39 on 11 carries. Jason Hansen having a little bit of difficulty keeping it on the tee with the win. So Sheldon White comes in to hold it for him. And Rod Woodson is back deep. Steelers will have it first here in the second half. Hansen kicking with the wind at his back. Drives it down to the one yard line. Woodson. Brought it back to the 26, a return of 25. Woodson. Troy Johnson made the tackle on special teams for Detroit. Well, we get a look at whatever the theme of halftime uh, for Bill Cower and his staff. I'm sure he went in there and said, We have got to go back and be efficient, try to control this ball. That was not a very happy Bill Cower at halftime, I'll bet. Ron Earhart, his offensive coordinator, who has been so important for him, I'm sure is saying, let's be patient, let's drive the football, let's control the game. Well, there you go, right back to Foster for the first play of the second half. Mark Spindler wrapped him up. And as always, Chris Spielman is at the bottom of the pile. A gain of three for Barry Foster. For the Pittsburgh style of offense to work, Patience is maybe the number one uh, emotion or feeling that you have to have. And when you think the game might be easy, sometimes you're not patient. And it works to the, your disadvantage in this philosophy. And I have the feeling that Pittsburgh maybe got a little impatient throughout the first half. Let's see what happens here. The interception by O'Donnell in the first half, only the fifth that he has thrown this year. Dumped it off to Foster. That's a gain of a couple out to the 31. George Jamison first there to put the hit on him. Jerry Paul also in the vicinity. Here's the play action pass. Again, the fake to Foster. Trying to hold the linebacker. Look at Spielman. They've got him all the way up there. He kind of holds Cooper before he goes out of your picture. Then he just dumps the ball off. Getting the conservative gain. Again, that's the kind of quarterback O'Donnell has to be for this football team to be successful. Third down, four yards to go for the first down. They snapped it right to Leroy Thompson, and they fooled the Lions with that one. He's out to the 46. A gain of 14 and a first down for the Steelers. They told, they told the quarterback to fake. What's the fake? <laughs> That's a fake and a half there. And that and the, it's the timing of that. You expect the pass rough and the rush, and that ball is on you right away. Uh, that's a nice call. Again, third down four, third down three. Gives them a chance to do that. Remember at the beginning of the first half, they were in those positions and kept making first downs. First carry of the day for Thompson. He's also had a reception. Play action fake. Cooper, the tight end, tripped up with the midfield stripe by the safety, William White. First down, it's the run to Foster or the fake to Foster. See Cooper over on the other side. Go out of your screen. There's the fake. Throw the ball to Koo Cooper as soon as he breaks loose. There he gets that ball. 
And again, that's that's the crux of the philosophy that they have. Make the four yard play on first down to the back. We'll go with the play action pass. Second down and four, just across midfield. First possession of the second half. Steelers trying to build on a 10-7 lead, and Barry Foster is very close to a first down at the Detroit 45. Jerry Ball made the stop. It is a first down for the Steelers. That guy earns his money, whatever it is they're paying him. He earns it, doesn't he? Uh, he's in collision after collision. And, and he's a very, very tough player. Remember, he talked to us uh, yesterday about Earl Campbell was his idol uh, because he was such a physical runner. Barry Foster is certainly taking after his idol in that regard. Foster again. Ordinarily, that wouldn't be the formula for longevity among <laughs> running backs in the NFL, but Foster said... When I can't run over people anymore, that's when I'll quit. Well, you got to do what you got to do, and that's uh, his style. And again, you see here, there's uh, almost a five-yard gain on first down. Again, the sense of patience it seems to be coming back. Ron Earhart, the offensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, has done just a fabulous job for Bill Cowher. Coach Cowher told us yesterday his first decision was to hire Ron Earhart, and he said that's probably been his best decision. Uh, since he's been head coach of this team. Foster on the verge of his seventh 100-yard rushing game. Now the reverse to Ernie Mills. Gets a block from O'Donnell. Mills down to the 20-yard line. Chris Spielman saved the touchdown for Detroit. A gain of 20. Hand off to Foster now. And again, it, it attracts a tremendous amount of attention. A ni nice reverse. The surprise element. There's O'Donnell out leading the block. Let's see if he blocks him. And oh my goodness, what a block that is. They'll have him playing guard if he keeps blocking like that. <laughs> now he's going to bring, that's bragging rights for the quarterback for about three weeks there. He will have that play replayed 20 times in the film session. We've seen Neil O'Donnell with some acting ability on this drive and now some blocking ability. 6 3 2 30. That time Foster didn't hand it off to anybody else, and the Lions stayed with him to run him out for a loss on the play of one back to the 21. It was George Jamison who's credited with the stop. Well, he dominated uh, the block by Cooper that time, and uh, Cooper didn't hold him, at least. Uh, but they're not doing a very good job of getting the ball outside. And that's where they've been so successful. And I have the feeling Detroit is really trying to take that away so that the ball, the, the, the run up inside, has a good chance to go. However, Detroit has two really outstanding players in their inside of their game, Chris Spielman and Jerry Ball, both Pro Bowl type players. And you might not want to run the football at them all that many times. Second and 11. Time consuming drive of five and a half minutes to open the half for Pittsburgh. O'Donnell again with all day. The catch is made. Yancey Thigpen with his first reception of the season. They, they were looking for Cooper down the middle. You see him come in motion. Watch him come right through the camera. That's where they, he was looking, and he hesitated. That time he said, if I hesitate, I'm not throwing it in there. Throws the safety valve out to Yancey Thigpen, who gets about a one-yard gain. But that, again, that's playing quarterback well. He tried to get something done. It wasn't there. He made a proper judgment, got the ball thrown uh, in a safe manner. It was the first NFL reception for Yancey Thigpen. So the Steelers have had two receivers today make their first NFL catches. Whoa! Ernie Mills took a pop, lost the football, but they ruled him down by contact, and there was plenty of contact with Benny Blades. He's down short of the first down at the 15. Let's listen to that one again. Island in the middle. Benny Blades is one of the toughest and best strong safeties in this league, and uh, you saw why. Blades made his first trip to the Pro Bowl last year. He'll be going there again before his career is through. Anderson is missed from 33, made from 21. This is from 32. Again, a bobbled hold by Royals, and it was blocked. It never got off the ground. That's the second time that Royals has failed to give Anderson a good hold. And the second miss of the day 
for the third most accurate kicker in NFL history. We'll be back in just a moment. The higher you go, the more power you need. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. That's why up here they depend on the most horsepower ever in a turbo diesel pickup. I go around. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. I go around. What's wrong with this Big Mac Extra Value Meal? At $2.99 with fries and a Coke Classic, it's definitely not the price. Look closer. Do you see it? That sesame seed. It's upside down. I am sorry. Get the problem! The affordable Canon CJ10. The power of color is yours. Calling for great taste and a less filling beer. One beer's made to order. Miller Lite. It's everything you want a beer to be. Ooh, I like it like that. Come on, let me show you where it's at. Ooh. Come on. Here we get a look at a botch placement now. This is uh, two botch placements. The, the punter who is. Uh, been selected as the holder for Pittsburgh now. Yeah, that's good enough for center. He doesn't get it down, and the ball is poorly kicked. So Gary Anderson, because of two bad holes in a large part, is only one for three in the field goal category today. He came in 16 of 20 for the year. Kramer down back at the 11-yard line. Gary Howell, the nose man at the bottom of the pile. Here again, we're going to look at the play-action pass, but look how long Kramer holds this ball now. He's looking down the field. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything. There's no place to go with it. That's a coverage sack or, a, or, or just a play selection that asked him to hold the ball maybe just a little too long, considering the offensive line that he has. This is the first possession of the second half for the Lions. The Steelers open with a drive of seven minutes and four seconds. They ran 10 plays, came away with no points as a result of the missed field goal. Kramer again holds on to it for a long time, dumped it off to Sanders. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. So they're looking at third and about 10. Out at the 17-yard line. You know, it's an inter interesting decision when we go back to the holder. Coaches have to select who's going to really hold for mm -hmm. Usually quarterbacks hold, or now it's become in vogue in the NFL to have your uh, uh, punter hold for the uh, field goal kicker because they practice together so much. Basically, they don't do anything during practice, and they get a lot of practice. But often this guy just doesn't have the kind of hands necessary to do that. And that's what I think is happening to them right now. Third down and nine. Quick pass, incomplete. It was thrown behind Herman Moore, but he had a chance to field it. D.J. Johnson had the coverage. Three plays and out for the Lions on their first possession. Well, you have the feeling that Detroit is giving up on the run a little bit and going to the pass, and they're just not effective enough uh, to be able to either get the kind of protection or have the kind of accuracy throwing to... Uh, be able to survive a full half just on passing. Jim Arnold will punt it away to Rod Woodson. Steelers should come out of this with excellent field position. A short, wobbly punt. Rodson, uh, Rod Woodson, rather, on the run. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Excellent field position indeed for the Steelers as they'll open at the Detroit 41. We'll be back in just a moment.
start to be the one great tasting beer that's less filling. Miller Lite's everything you want a beer to be. I didn't think she'd come. I know she'd come. Yeah. Miller Lite, I like it like that. Come on! Every hour, we select a Chevy Cavalier to take a memorable trip at the factory over a very sophisticated bumpy road. We call it the squeak and rattle track, and it's one man's job to test Cavaliers and find problems before they get to you. It's a rough job, but someone's got to do it. Surprised that Chevy has a road, a test, and a man like this? It shouldn't be. What else would you expect from the heartbeat of America? Take the heat out of shaving. Soothe your razor burn with post-shave conditioning hydrogel from Old Spice. Because when you've got fruit, who needs promises? It's gone. But it isn't. Here's strong medicine in a cough drop. Extra strength mix with Vicks Vapor Medicine so effective, it'll relieve your cough and help your scratchy throat and stuffy nose feel better even after the drop is gone. America's most infamous serial killers. There's no stopping this guy. Have all been men until now. I am Laura. Based on the true story, Gene Smart and Overkill, Tuesday. Bill Cower, the head coach, nearest to the camera. Ron Earhart, the Cowers right. I guess this is an example, if you're Pittsburgh and want to win this team, that you're, uh, win this game rather, that you're a good team because good teams can sometimes win games in which they don't play particularly well. And they can get back to, to the themes that, they, that are so important for them, which this club, I think, has to do here if it's going to go in the score. Barry Foster across the 40 and down to the 38, a gain of three on first down. Bill Cower established the tone very early upon his arrival. He was a hard-nosed player, and he decided he was going to play the people who were going to play the hardest for him, whether they were high draft picks or not. Well, you see here on the graphic, he's been willing to come in here and trade or, or, or get rid of or not play people who you would say, hey, we got to play this guy. He's a high draft choice. He's making a lot of money. As one of his players said, he's playing the guys that deserve to play, and he's earned a lot of respect for that. O'Donnell. Got away from the rush of Mike Kofer. And Jerry Ball chased him out at the original line of scrimmage. Kofer is injured on the play. Kofer had a chance to get him, and Mike has been bothered by a number of injuries in recent years. Last year, he went out for the entire season in the third game with a knee injury, and he's had neck problems this season. For the timeout on the field, the Steelers lead by three. Imagine a V8 engine that's incredibly powerful, yet easy to maintain. Imagine a five-speed automatic that's responsive, yet seamlessly smooth. Imagine a luxurious sedan that can actually help make you a better driver. Introducing the BMW 740iL. A car that will have the competition playing catch-up once again. Imagine that. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going and... Even when a friend leaves them... You dated I Love... Every Tuesday we've looked through his telescope... And war... And the rest ain't none of your business. ...goes on a special Love and War Monday. Michael Koper about to be wheeled off the field. Coach, it looked during the timeout as if it was a left hamstring problem or perhaps a left knee problem for... Kofer. Yeah, it, it, it's certainly something that 
a twisting motion called it. You see Kofor come in there. Now you see him. That's where the injury starts right there. That left leg buckled on him. Whether that's a hamstring, it looked more like a hamstring to mm -hmm. me rather than the knee buckling. So uh, anyway, he's had a very difficult time. He missed just about all of last season. He's one of the outstanding uh, uh, linebackers in the NFL. And his luck just has not been very good, which is kind of consistent with the kind of luck Detroit has had over this last uh, year. Uh, this man is one of the key players for the team. They overcame the, his loss last year, but it's obviously much more difficult for them now. Certainly football fans around the country aware of all the adversity and tragedy that has beset the Detroit Lions in the past year. It was one year ago this weekend that Mike Utley suffered a paralyzing injury in a game against the Los Angeles Rams and then in this past offseason assistant coach Len Fonts the brother of the head coach Wayne Fonts died of a heart attack Eric Andelsek a promising offensive lineman killed when he was hit by a runaway truck on his front yard in Louisiana and this season injuries have been a problem throughout and also during training camp the lack of uh, players signed the contracts hurt they had 11 players who were not in camp as the result of contract jump it just kind of uh, it built a, a one upon the other and it was just too much from I thought last year Wayne Fonts did as good a coaching job as I as I've ever seen done in this league he had a lot of adversity last year but he kept his club going got all the way to the NFC championship game uh, and it just uh, lost his quarterback uh, lost this man lost Jerry Ball uh, head injury uh, he just did an absolutely fabulous job but they've just been overwhelmed by the problems this year but this club is a club that can get back in it mm -hmm. uh, in time I think they're a long way from from uh, being a club that is really a two and seven club uh, with a few breaks and some help in the offensive line they can get back in the hunt mm -hmm. again next year that's what Wayne said yesterday with an offensive lineman and a pass rusher they'll be right back to where they were a year ago Hans, the coach of the year in the NFL last year when the Lions went 12 and 4 O'Donnell dropped back at the 49 yard line Kelvin Pritchett the second year man out of Mississippi forced a punting situation let's check in with Greg Gumbel for an NFL update in New York all right, Sean, the Washington Redskins are on the board thanks to a fake punt that kept the drive alive, and then Ricky Urbans converts from five yards out. In the third quarter, the Chiefs' lead over the Redskins is now 28-7. to Sean? Well, those are two teams having kind of a strange year, both uh, end of the season with very high hopes, and both have had an up-and-down ride. The tough day of Mark Royals continues. He's already bobbled two snaps on field goal tries, and now he shanks a punt, but there is a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. We might want to decline that because the punt <laughs> went out of bounds at the 32 yard line. It was only a 15 yard punt. There's a rule in the NFL. You never accept a penalty after a 50 yard mm -hmm. punt. I would think so. <laughs> Unless they're going to give you something really special. Like uh, Bill Cowher had a word or two for Mark Royals. Mark Royals is not having a day that he would like to remember. The kicking team is declined. First down. That means the Lions will get it at the 34 yard line when we come back. With 509 left in the third quarter, and the Lions are hanging around and hanging around despite not having done much today. They sure are, and Pittsburgh, I'm sure, is starting to get concerned about it. Play action fake to Sanders. Kramer hit as he threw to Sanders and buries out of bounds at the 39 yard line with a first down gain of five. It really it really surprises me how these teams are going away from the runners that uh, are so important to them. Both teams seem to want to go to the play action pass. Here's the play action pass again. You see Barry Sanders sneak in the flat. Not a very good fake. He was looking downfield got to Barry Sanders late. Doesn't give him much chance to run with the football. Uh, it gets him about a four yard gain. Darrell Williams ran him out of bounds. Eric Kramer played in replacement games for Atlanta back in 1987. Played two years in the CFL with Calgary. Found his third year with the Lions and going deep for Perryman. Incomplete. 
D.J. Johnson running stride for si uh, stride rather with Brett Perryman, and it was incomplete inside the 20-yard line. Here's Perryman uh, on, on an isolation against Johnson. Watch him just push up the field, trying to use speed, give him a little move to the outside. Johnson doesn't bite for it and is really in good position. Perry's the guy that, if he'd have been a little deeper, could have really been in a position to help force that into an interception. But that was a good job by Johnson. I think he felt he was going deep and just did not bite for the fake. Lions throughout the season have had difficulty on third down, both on offense and on defense. Today on offense, they're 0 for 4 on third down. Looking at third and five. Kramer had some running room. Instead, he threw it for the first down to Willie Green. He's out to the 49-yard line. Sammy Walker, a backup cornerback, made the tackle for Pittsburgh. Detroit's offensive line did a good job that time. They've taken a lot of criticism uh, throughout this entire season, but they did a good job that time. Uh, Brown controlled Williams on the outside pass rush that let Kramer step up inside. They've got good field position. They can afford to be a little patient. Uh, it just, uh, just seems to me that they've got to get Barry Sanders back in this football game, running the football on something besides draws. 53-year-old Wayne Fox looking up at the scoreboard clock. He just watched his team pick up its first first down of the second half. 10-7 Pittsburgh. Three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. They do get back to Sanders. He skips into Pittsburgh territory. Just short of the 45-yard line, Donald Evans made the play for the Steelers. And Barry Sanders, with that carry, has just gone over 5,000 yards for his career. Now with 5,002 in this just his fourth season in the NFL. He's one of the most exciting players and one of the calmest players. And you never see him raise his voice. He's not uh, demonstrative at all. He just goes out and does his job and uh, does it as well as anybody has ever done. It. He's rushed for at least 1,300 yards in each of his first three seasons. He'll have a a lot of work to do to get to 1300 this year. He came in with 635. Flags down. Again, the brilliance of Sanders, as Coach Robinson has been noting, the ability to go side to side and make people miss. Freedom up for the first down if the play stands. It will not. Illegal motion, the call against Detroit. Here we get a look at the brilliance of, of Sanders again. Watch him make people miss. There's not a lot of blocking. There's one guy. There's two. He freezes him. Watch his legs go right through. Now the acceleration and the speed. Nickerson doesn't even get a real good shot on him. He's just so quick. As, Gr as Greg Lloyd told us uh, yesterday, he said, I do not want to be on this guy's highlight film. <laughs> and there are a lot of guys who I'm sure have been embarrassed trying to tackle this man. Second down and nine for Detroit from midfield. That's the seventh penalty of the game against the Lions. Kramer caught Herman Moore a first down at the 37-yard line. Driven back by D.J. Johnson. It's a gain of 14 for Herman Moore, the former first-round draft choice out of the University of Virginia. Again, Moore singled out there. You, you, you saw... Uh, the safety up in there close or close to the line it makes it an easy play again you give the ball to the tailback a couple of times pretty soon the wide receivers are single covered then it becomes easier now let's see if they go back to Barry Sanders and keep him keep in a rhythm that's the rhythm for Detroit Sanders Sanders then the play mm -hmm. action pass to give them something and they're in the formation I think that gives them that with Johnson lined up in the fullback position Johnson ordinarily a tight end he leads Sanders into trouble Barry did well to get back to the line of scrimmage, and now flags fly for a face mask call against the Steelers. This will be the ninth penalty against Pittsburgh. Marty Nickerson called for the face mask. Here he is outside. He's, he's making something out of nothing. Mm. It wasn't much of a face mask, but it's just enough. And Nickerson, I'm sure, is saying, hey, wait a minute. I'll get that guy any place I can and be happy for it. 
Again, they're starting to find their rhythm now. Down marker says second and five, but it's wrong. It should be first and five over there. Mm -hmm. Our graphics have it right. That's People why the, the official side. stopped the play. And now they do flip it back to first down. First and five upcoming for the Lions. They're on the move at the 32 of Pittsburgh. In the final two minutes of the third quarter, the Steelers lead 10 to 7. That was the score at the half. Again, Johnson lines up in the backfield and leads Sanders to the right. Sanders has the first down. Now to the 25-yard line. Well, this is the most impressive part of the game for Detroit so far. Their offensive line and and when you let an offensive line come off the football and physically try to dominate the other guy, something begins to happen to them. Pretty soon, their sense of confidence comes in there. They start getting a feeling, hey, we can make something happen for Barry. Now watch Pittsburgh try to come up on first down, try to stop the run. Again, then the play-action pass becomes such a big weapon. In the final half minute of the third quarter, first and 10 Lions at the Steeler 25. Back to the four wide receiver set. Kramer for more inside the five and down to the two-yard line. D.J. Johnson made the touchdown saving tackle for Pittsburgh. On what will be the final play of the third quarter. So the Lions will have first and goal from inside the two-yard line to start the fourth quarter. At the end of the third quarter, the score, the Pittsburgh Steelers 10 and the Detroit Lions 7. Imagine a V8 engine that's incredibly powerful, yet easy to maintain. Imagine a five-speed automatic that's responsive, yet seamlessly smooth. Imagine a luxurious sedan that can actually help make you a better driver. Introducing the BMW 740iL, a car that will have the competition playing catch-up once again. Imagine that. wearing shoes. When you're calling for great taste and less filling beer, one beer's made to order. Miller Lite. It's everything you want a beer to be. Here we get a look at Herman Moore just running a single in-breaking pattern on Johnson. Remember, a couple times ago, he, break, he ran out breaking pattern. Johnson sat outside of him that time. Boom, they hit the in-breaking pattern, the ball thrown on time. They're first and goal on the one. Once you make the run go, then the wide receiver gets isolated on that defensive back, and good things start to happen in the passing game. And good things have started to happen for Eric Kramer. He was... Five for seven in the third quarter for 59 yards passing. First and goal from just outside the one for Detroit. The touchdown would give the Lions their first lead of the afternoon. It's 10-7 Pittsburgh as we begin the fourth quarter. Sanders. Touchdown, Detroit. Here we get a look at Barry Sanders. Watch his legs now throughout this run. What, look how right there he's hit. Those legs just keep going, keep going, keep going. Touchdown. Sign of a great runner running through tackles. That time he just kind of slips off him. 
A big extra point try here for Hanson, trying to make it a four-point lead. Out of the hold of the punter, Arnold. Hanson drills it through. The Lions lead 14 to 10 in the first seven seconds of the fourth quarter. We'll return to Three Rivers Stadium after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This is CBS. A quote from Rodentrack says the 190E2.3's understated elegance never seems to go out of style. A quote from Car and Driver says the 190E2.6 feels as solid as concrete. And a quote from Automobile Magazine says the three-pointed star shines as brightly as ever. But none of these compare to the different quotes you can now get from your local Mercedes-Benz dealers. Now available with 2% annual percentage rate financing. When you join Aetna Health Plans of Western Pennsylvania, you have a long list of doctors from which to choose. Experienced and caring physicians, like Dr. Philip Levine. With Aetna Health Plans, it's easy to find the doctor who's just right for you. Every physician is carefully screened to ensure you and your family receive only the highest quality care. Before any of our doctors give you a checkup, you can be sure Edna's given them one. Think about the future and what we're leaving behind. Our trash could become their burden. Unless we use recycled and recyclable products. This is Governor Bob Casey. Please, don't leave our children holding the bag. Recycling works. KDKA TV Sports. You've got the best seat in the house. Coming up next in game two of our CBS doubleheader, it's the battle for first place in the NFC West. Led by Steve Young, the NFL's number one rated quarterback. And premier wide receiver Jerry Rice, the high-scoring 49ers, are up against Jim Moore's New Orleans Saints. We'll have that for you next here on CBS. Ron Woodson cuts back and goes down to the 28-yard line. That's where the Steelers will begin first and 10 as they trail for the first time in this football game. 14 to 10 Detroit with 14.40 to play. Well, this is going to be, I think, the key drive of the game for Pittsburgh. They've got to get back to doing the things that they do well. I think they've gotten a little out of their own character uh, here, their own personality by going to the pass, trying to look for the big play. If they just are patient, much like Detroit was on their drive, we'll see what happens. From the 28, they do go back to their strength, Barry Foster, and he gets nothing. William White up from his safety spot, Chris Spielman there to finish him off now, it's interesting Chris Spielman talked to us that, uh, yesterday saying when they get in that formation they're going to run the counter tray and that's what they run and boy Chris knew it mm -hmm. and he was there he's become a guy who's one of the brightest linebackers in the league as well as one of the most physical he talked yesterday as Bill Cowher inspires his defense Spielman talked to us yesterday about the attitude of this Detroit team, despite the two and seven record, been impressive the way they've hung with it today. Foster had to go through his hands. We asked Chris Spielman about the attitude of the Lions in this disappointing season. He said he hadn't noticed anybody quitting. He says, if you do quit, it's second only to treason in this country. And if I saw anybody quit, I would do anything I could to get him out of here. If I read that quote, I wouldn't ever talk about quitting around no. him anywhere. I, he's one of those kind of guys that has that look in his eye like it says, hey, this is serious business. Uh, one of the most competitive football players I've ever been around. He comes out in the passing situation, third down and nine. Well, Donald now 13 of 25 passing. First down. Didio again. With his third catch of the game, his third NFL catch out to the 46. A gain of 18 and a first down much needed by Pittsburgh. That sure was. Uh, Didio is having a big impact on this game. That was a crucial, crucial play for Pittsburgh. They couldn't afford to go three and out. Uh, they were third down and 10, and he helped, got him off the hook. Again, catching the ball in the middle. Uh, Didio, Didio uh, really has... Uh, 
What an outstanding <laughs> he job. Sure has. He's going to be able to phone home and say, hey, Mom, I got a job for at least one more week. He's a native of Syracuse, New York, and played at the University of Connecticut. Back to the ground with Foster. That's a gain of three. Again, we check in with Greg Gumbel for this NFL Today update. All right, Sean, Packers and the Eagles in Milwaukee. Watch the screen, Randall Cunningham to Heath Sherman, and with nice blocking in front of him, Heath is going to rumble for 75 yards. 21-17, the Packers lead the Eagles with six minutes to play in the game, Sean. Talk about strange years as we were earlier. The Eagles have had one of those. Randall Cunningham back at the command. With his last carry, Foster has reached exactly 100 yards rushing for the day. On second and seven, O'Donnell with a month to throw it. Now he'll run for the first down. He's very close to it at the 43-yard line of Detroit. He appeared to pick it up by inches. Again, Pittsburgh is going to one run and and, uh, and then, then a couple of passes. They just don't seem to be able to put uh, uh, runs together. There's a receiver running down the field saying, man, throw me oh, the ball. Oh, is he open? You call that a coverage breakdown. Of course, then, then by then, you don't see the quarterback, and he's already scrambling away from that and may not be effective at all in that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one thing to be open. It's another thing to have a quarterback seeing you be open. Neil O'Donnell in his third year out of the University of Maryland, one of five former Terrapin quarterbacks on rosters around the National Football League today. It was a first down at the 43 of Detroit. 12 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The Lions lead by four, and there's a fumble by Mills. Jerry Ball has it for Detroit at the 43. This is just good tackling now. Again, it's a first and ten drop back pass. Again, against the personality of Pittsburgh. Watch the hit now. It's, again, a fired up team. Spielman and a great hit by White. And the recovery by Ball will be back in just a moment. Can a razor cut your beard below the skin without the blades touching your face? It can if it's a Norelco because inside the floating heads, our lift and cut system lifts the hair so when it's cut, it can drop below skin level without the blades touching your face. Are you shaving this incredibly close and comfortable? You are when you shave with Norelco. Norelco, we make close, comfortable. In traffic, you encounter windows of opportunity which is why we gave the Mercedes-Benz 400D a V8 engine. Right now, Mercedes is offering 2% APR financing on the 400D and other selected models. A window of opportunity that bears a striking resemblance to those you find in traffic. For financing details, see your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. We need a break. A McDonald's break. Yeah, a Big Mac. Fries. Yeah, large fries. An ice cold medium Coke classic. Oh, give me a break. Everything, all of it, right now, just $2.99. $2.99 for all that? Are we getting a break? Yeah. I get a Big Mac sandwich, large fries, and a medium Coke, all for just $2.99? That's incredible. Extra value meals. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. This game summary is sponsored by McDonald's. And as you look at the game summary, the line that stands out the most at the bottom, Gary Anderson, one of three in field goals. He missed two that he would ordinarily make from the distances that he was attempting. But he had two bad holds in those six points. The difference in the game at the moment, the Lions lead by four, and they have it back after the fumble by Mills. George Jamison knocked it free. And Jerry Ball recovered for Detroit. On their own 43, the Lions set up the screen. Sanders walks the tightrope along the sideline. He's into Steeler territory with a first down at the 46. A gain of 11. 
Here again, we keep talking about Barry Sanders. This is a screen pass, and he gets the football. Watch him set everybody up. Watch how he freezes everybody, and then he's going, turns up that sideline, and makes about seven yards while everybody else is moving about two. <laughs> that's a worried-looking Bill Cower that we saw right at the end of that standing on the sidelines. Detroit has got the rhythm now. They're using Sanders both on screens, on runs. Ken Dallapore, the injured Lion, in his eighth year out of University of Minnesota, the starting right guard, and he was originally drafted by Pittsburgh back in 1982. Philadelphia has come all the way back to take the lead in that game from Green Bay. Certainly one thing the Lions cannot afford is another injury on the offensive line. Lomas Brown started today at left tackle, and he is the only starting lineman on offense today for Wayne Fonts, who lined up at this time last year in their offensive line. For more on that game between Philadelphia and Green Bay, once again, here's Greg. Greg? All right, Sean, back-to-back -back pass interference calls on Green Bay moved the Eagles 83 yards, and then Herschel Walker took it the last two. Five and a half minutes to play in Milwaukee. The Eagles lead it by three, 24-21. Sean? Reports of Herschel's demise greatly exaggerated. <laughs> yes. Well, that's nice to see because he, he, you know, there was so much uh, condemning... Uh, comments about him and it's nice to see him having a good year. They've got to get Dallafor back in that football game pretty fast here. He's been replaced by Dennis McKnight. A 10-year man out of Drake. Number 63. Sanders rips through a hole. Sanders on the way to the end zone. Johnson the only man with a chance and he drags him down. Flag thrown where the tackle was made. Sanders down to the three-yard line after a gain of 43. Here we're going to see Barry Sanders step over here and start a draw play. But watch the acceleration. Steps over. Look at the draw up. Starts sideways. Now watch the acceleration there. He finds the lane immediately. First down. Outstanding run. Again, he had a nice lane, but boy, can he accelerate. Here we get a look at just Sanders. Again, watch his feet now. Watch how quickly, how often he just widens his feet. Now look at him go. Nobody is going any faster at this league than that man is right there. <laughs> and he has given this football team brand new life, and they're, uh, they're about to take a significant advantage here. They lead by four, and they have first and goal from the two. There was no flag on the play. They picked it up. Kramer, under pressure, throws to the end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Mike Farr, who was well covered in the corner of the end zone by Carnell Lake. So often when you get down in this area, you can talk yourself into as an offensive signal caller saying, hey, gee, they expect the run, we'll fool them with the pass. Uh, sometimes you go away from what seems to be your best mm -hmm. thing, thinking, well, you know, and... and now you can you gotta bet they're going to give the ball to 20 on this particular play. Sanders means, rushed for 95 yards today, and they do have Johnson lined up in front of him. Which means maybe maybe another play action pass is the right guy. If they think this will do that. Kramer lost the snap. And the Lions got it back. Kramer himself came up with the free football, but it's a loss back to the three. That ball just hit, hit him on the bottom hand, and it just bounces loose. The, the idea in that snap is you want to hit the top hand of the quarterback. Centers, when they get down in close to the goal line, try to get down lower so they can get under the block, and sometimes that snap. Here's a, one of the big plays of the ball game here. Digging down to 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. The Lions lead by four. They have it third and goal from the three. The delay to Sanders. He lost the football. Woodson has it at the five-yard line.
the thought was that time that Detroit was looking for Pittsburgh to be in a, in a zone, but Pittsburgh blitzed that time. They spread everybody out, thought the blitz was coming. Look at Nickerson come right on him. They don't pick him up. They've got a blitz by Nickerson and the safety man. Mm. That was the one thing you can't handle on a draw play. Two guys unmolested come and hit him. They get the ball back. Interesting call down to the three-yard line. Fourth turnover of the day by the Lions. O'Donnell doesn't go through the hands of Davenport. I'm just amazed at what Pittsburgh is doing right now. They have just seemed to have given up on, on, mm -hmm. on their personality, what they do. They've got plenty of time to take this football down and drive. And they are coming off with the pass uh, on first down a lot of times now. And once you go away from the run to the pass, it's really hard to come back to the run. I'm not sure why, but it just seems like once you start throwing the football every down, something begins to happen to you. Sean McDonough with John Robinson at sold out Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Steelers trail by four with 9.45 to play. Play action pass. Foster goes nowhere. Chris Spielman there again to dump Foster for a loss of three back to the 12-yard line. Don't you just see the set, uh, get a sense that the Detroit defense is coming alive, having a sense, hey, we're playing with a lead with something they're not used to for a while, and you can just feel them coming alive. Look at Spielman. You can see it in his eyes. He say, hey, somebody congratulate me here. We, we're ahead of these guys. That's all right. Oh, so his partner there says, all right, I'll tell you. I'm not sure I'd ever take him off the field, regardless of the situation. Well, third down and 12. Taking down to nine minutes remaining. No rush at all. O'Donnell's pass through the hands of Mills. He was open at the 40, but the pass drifted high from Neil O'Donnell. And here comes the punt team of Pittsburgh onto the field. Here again, you throw in the middle, and again, he throws high and a little bit late. And those safeties, particularly the safeties on this football team, are both waiting for him. And he pays a, an enormous price. And there's three downs and three and out, three passes and out. Mel Gray moving up to field this one. He hopes at his own 45. Mark Royals could use a good punt to turn his day around. Pretty good kick. Fielded by Gray at the 42. And he's down at the 45. Ball came loose, but the whistle had sounded. The Lions with the ball when we come back. Detroit 14, Pittsburgh 10. I saw those lights, and even though I was only five, I knew something terrible had happened. First, I saw the cars. They were, I don't know, mangled. My father told me not to look, but I had to. I remember seeing this little boy. We made eye contact. I could see the fear in his eyes. It's something I'll never forget. No, I don't drive a Mercedes to impress my friends. Now, all over the world, the sisters and mothers and best friends waiting to hear from you can hear from you for a lot less. Introducing the AT&T Special Country Plan. Save 15%. It's easy. There's no monthly fee. Just call right now and tell us you're one special international country and start saving to everyone in it every hour of every day. We'll always be there to make calling more affordable. Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. To last throughout the year. So bring your good time and your life too. Celebrate life with Eden Rock. The National Football League is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, builder of fine automobiles since 1886. Norelco, patented lift and cut shavers. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the special delivery company. 
Here in Pittsburgh, a very important game for the Steelers. And a very important man for the Lions. Injured on the last play, William White, who made the hit on Ernie Mills after the incomplete pass, turned his ankle. I don't know at the moment whether or not he'll return. Sanders did well to only lose two. William Wright is going to be a key man for him as this game winds down. Uh, there you see him really mm. favoring that ankle. He's not coming back with something that hurts that bad. And with uh, Pittsburgh being forced to go to the air, that may really make a difference in the secondary coverage. Harry Colon is his backup. Colon acquired on plan B this season from New England. This sellout crowd trying to spur on the Steeler defense. The Lions better hurry. Seven seconds left on the play clock as they get over the ball. One second to get it off. And he just did. Sanders ahead for a couple more. That'll bring up third down and nine for Detroit at its own 46. Down to 7.43 to play in the fourth quarter. The Lions lead 14 to 10. Again, the third down starts counting uh, for more and more as this game goes on. Third down and nine. Detroit, as you said earlier, Sean, has not been very good in this circumstance. They went to a screen earlier to Barry Sanders. Let's see what they do now. I think uh, Pittsburgh is coming on them. The Lions win for six in third down conversions. They are coming, and Kramer had to get rid of it. Richard Shelton came on the blitz and forced the quick and errant throw by Kramer. One of the things that new offensive lines don't do very well is pick up the, the, the blitzing type plays, things that are a little different. They get uncertain about and somebody breaks through that time, batted the football down. Jim Arnold, the punt. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. The Steelers blocked the punt in the first half. They're coming hard, and Arnold just did get it off. A short, wobbly kick. Woodson gets away from Jenkins and goes down at the 27-yard line. A 33-yard punt, a five-yard return. The Steelers have it back with 6.54 to play. We'll be back in just a moment. Working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. With the return to health of multi-talented Randall Cunningham, plus the continued improvement of number 86, Fred Barnett, the Eagles' air attack has dramatically taken wing this season. Together, this potent passing partnership has helped make the Philadelphia Eagle attack the best they can be. If you want to move ahead in any career, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to work with a team, how to handle responsibility, how to take on a tough job and see it through. You can learn all these things in the Army. So when you do set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat. I saw those lights, and even though I was only five, I knew something terrible had happened. First, I saw the cars. They were, I don't know, mangled. My father told me not to look, but I had to. I remember seeing this little boy. We made eye contact. I could see the fear in his eyes. It's something I'll never forget. No, I don't drive a Mercedes to impress my friends. If you're just joining us, two big plays in the game, two missed field goals by Pittsburgh. You can understand this mishandling of the snap by Mark Royals in the near blizzard conditions we had at the start of the game. Gary Anderson missing from 33 when Royals bobbled it. No excuse for this one, certainly, in perfect conditions. Again, the bad hold, and Anderson showing his frustration after his second miss. Gary won for three today. And that's six points they could have had that they don't have, and the Steelers trail by four. 
14-10 Detroit. The Steelers with the ball in their own 27 with 6.54 to play. After the play action fake, the pass is on the mark. First down, Pittsburgh out to the 49-yard line. Ernie Mills trying to atone for the fumble moments ago. Here again, we're going to look at uh, the fake draw. Not much of a fake. O'Donnell is looking down the middle, the in-breaking pattern. Wide open in, in the middle. They get a hit on him, but not enough. That's been there for Pittsburgh throughout the game. I think Detroit's going to have to be a little more aggressive on those in-breaking patterns. Four catches today for Mills. That one was good for a 22-yard gain. O'Donnell scoops it up and goes out of bounds for a huge loss. Pull the hamstring. He looks like O'Donnell pulled a hamstring, and it looks like he pulled it uh, uh, seriously. I think that's going to be it for him. Bubby Brister had better start warming up fast. Because he's going to be in the game with second down and about uh, 20 yards to go for a first down. Again, this football team has allowed itself to begin doing things that it doesn't do very well. They've gone away from the run. They're first and 10. They lose 20 yards and their quarterback. Bobby Brister has not taken a snap at a regular season game this year. He is the former starter. As a matter of fact, this is the first season since 1987 that he did not open the season as the starting quarterback for Pittsburgh. Again, first down passing, and they're just not a great pass protection team. And when clubs start rushing him, he's scrambling around. Remember how we talked earlier, how he had that ball held out there that time, couldn't hold on to it. And there's the hamstring, and it starts to hurt. And then, oh boy, does it ever hurt. And it's, you never know how incapacitating a hamstring injury is until you have one. And then you feel like you've been shot back there. And I know he's in intense pain. O'Donnell has been the architect of some fourth quarter heroics this year for Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, six of his 12 touchdown passes this year have come in the fourth quarter, but it looks like he'll be lost for the rest of the way, and it'll be Bubby Brister charged with the responsibility of pulling this one out. Green Bay trying to pull it out as they had squandered the lead momentarily. You see that Washington is on the comeback trail. Minnesota still leads Houston. looks like a bad hamstring I think they'd be well served not letting him walk on that the thing about injury you have such a big muscle and it tears and, and there's bleed internal bleeding in there and then it that's when the, the recovery becomes so slow because the blood becomes difficult to get out. Bobby Brister greeted by a mixed response as he takes the field we want to apologize we understand that we are having occasional difficulties with the audio portion of our telecast this afternoon. Our technicians working diligently to solve that problem. Bobby Brister in his seventh year out of Northeast Louisiana. 30 years old. And the starter since 1987 until this year when Neil O'Donnell won the preseason battle to become the starting quarterback. Bobby steps into a second and 22. From the Steeler 37 with 555 to play and with Detroit leading 14 to 10. Foster. Across midfield, down at the 48 of Detroit. Still seven yards short of a first down, but they got back 15 as Bubby Brister is on target with his first toss. And guy gave Brister a chance to feel pretty good. You know, he's one for one. Uh, the rhythm starts to come maybe a little bit now. And they've got two down. They've got one down now to get a first down back. Still a lot of time in this football game. They've got good field position. If they don't make the first down, they can punt Detroit down in deep in their territory and have a shot late in the game. The Steelers have all three of their timeouts remaining, as do the Lions. That's an incomplete pass intended for Yancey Thigpen, and he was well covered by Sheldon White. So the Steelers will have to punt again. Oh, 
That time Detroit gave him a, a kind of a man coverage, uh, man underneath and zone on top, and that's really the first man coverage that they've given him, uh, I think, in this in this game. So they gave him a little change up, and they couldn't quite get anybody open against that kind of coverage. Well, William White has already gone down for Detroit in their secondary, and now Sheldon White, after breaking up the pass to Thigpen, is being tended to by the Detroit medical staff. They're looking at his left leg. Sheldon White, formerly a member of the New York Giants, came to Detroit and Wayne Fonts in 1990. Fonts is coming on the field to see how Sheldon White is doing. This is a, uh, a very important punt for Pittsburgh. If they can get this ball to kick down inside the 20, hold Detroit and get good field position coming back. They can't afford to be patient, drive it down, and set up, uh, you know, they can't go for a field goal. They've got to go for a touchdown. They're down by four. Neil O'Donnell being helped off the field. Neil 17 of 31 today for 182 yards, a touchdown and an interception. He has a pulled left hamstring, and we are told that his return is doubtful, and you might have been able to guess that yourself based on watching him walk around since he went down, and now White heads off. You can tell that one just looking at him uh, pull up and uh, the amount of pain that he was in. Uh, those things, uh, one of the things that happens when you coach, you begin to understand what injuries are and the severity of them almost in the first two or three seconds after the injury. Royals to punt. Lions set up for a return. He tries to punt it away from Bell Gray. Gray fields it at the three-yard line. And goes down at the nine. Well, it doesn't really matter that he's one of the best in recent NFL history. That wasn't a smart play. Well, it, it uh, you know, he got it at least back out to the nine where they have some operating room. There's great pressure on the offense right now. There's uh, almost five minutes left to go in the game. And they need to make a couple of first downs. But above all, they need to be able to maintain possession and not, not give away an interception or a fumble. It's doubleheader day here on CBS. Next, some of you will see the Rams against the NFC East Division leading Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys at 8 and 1 with the NFL's best record. Others will see the battle for first place in the NFC West between the Saints and 49ers. That's coming up next on CBS Sports. From the nine, first and 10 for Detroit. Just under five minutes to play. The Lions lead 14 to 10. The Steelers coming to blitz. Kramer got it off, but Herman Moore didn't see that the blitz was coming and never turned around for the pass. Well, the quarterback did change the play. Everybody saw it and heard it except Herman Moore, who ran down and was going to block somebody. Those kind of errors are, are, you know, just break your heart when you get a chance mm -hmm. to to do the right thing against the blitz and then one of your players doesn't hear it. Well, that wild game in Milwaukee is over. Green Bay wins it on a field goal of 41 yards by Chris Jackie with no time remaining. And that drops the Eagles to six and four. Second and 10 from the nine, 4.54 to play. Kramer's missed on his last three. Dumps that off, the tight end McLemore. Drilled out of bounds at the 15. Still four yards short of a first down. Pittsburgh is blitzing on every down. They came on first down. They came again on that down. Third down and about five to go for uh, one of the most important first downs in this game. Be interesting to see if Pittsburgh comes again with the blitz. for the Detroit 15. Kramer. Caught. Brett Perriman with a big first down for the Lions out to the 33-yard line. A gain of 18. Look here. You'll see Pittsburgh not aligned properly. There are three receivers on the right. They're out of camera range. But as Kramer looks down the field, there's a blitz coming again. There are, look at all the guys there wide open in that seam and it wasn't a particularly good throw but he was so open he got a first down that time the blitz uh, blitzing idea hurt him they didn't have uh, the proper alignment on the receivers out of the 34 yard line first and 10 lions 
4.05 remaining here, and the clock is running. Detroit leads 14 to 10. Here they come again. Kramer with time. Mike Farr juggled it. It's an incomplete pass. Parnell Lake hit him, but Farr never had it. And the officials on top of the call in front of the Detroit sideline, which might have made it a more difficult call. <laughs> Not really. I think the officials have great courage, and they, they make those calls right away. Uh, makes your ears uh, uh, get a little <laughs> red maybe after you make the call, but uh, they go right forward and make. That's what you're really hoping for as a coach when you think about officials, a guy that's willing to make the mm -hmm. call right now and make it positively. You can usually live with those kind of calls. Second down and 10. 3.53 remaining. Detroit 14, Pittsburgh 10. Sanders in traffic and down at the line of scrimmage. Gerald Williams, Rod Woodson there. Now the Steelers will use a timeout with 3.44 left. Barry Sanders again. It's just a treat to watch him. There's not much inside. There's penetration off the corner by Woodson on a corner blitz. Woodson got up and got back in the game and was able to trap Sanders. Timeout Pittsburgh. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Detroit Lions, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the National Football League, and CBS is prohibited. Sean McDonough and John Robinson at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Bill Cower, who's been a great motivator for this team, is there talking to his defense, telling them that this is the time we need the ball back. Again, third down and 10. They took time out that time, which was a very wise decision. They saved almost 40 seconds on that clock. And, and that's when you're behind. You want to take time out when the other team has the football because you can save as much as 40 seconds off that clock. And the fans come to their feet on third down and nine for Detroit. The Lions at their own 35. Under pressure. It's knocked away from Kramer. Free ball. Carnell Lake out of bounds at the three-yard line. Woodson coming from the backside hits him before he gets a chance to throw the football. They again didn't have the protection they needed. That's a tendency that Pittsburgh had shown over and over again that they were going to blitz those two people. Watch here. It's a fake. There's nobody blocking the corner. Well, look at Woodson come like a just a maniac off that corner. That was a bad decision by Detroit. They just they didn't they had a blocking scheme up that couldn't pick up that blitz. Plus, the quarterback had his back turned to him. Pittsburgh has a chance to go ahead. Five Detroit turnovers today. Three fumbles and two interceptions. First and goal from the three. Foster driven back at the goal line. Dennis Gibson and Chris Spielman kept him out of the end zone. Well, there's that contest between Spielman and, and, and Foster. Look at Spielman, number 54. Look at Foster with the ball. They're looking. They're, uh, they're after each other. Spielman comes off the block by Hasselrig, makes the, con the hit, and stays with it and fights him down. They get one more shot at stopping him. That's why Chris Spielman is one of the very, very best. Timeout called by Brister. The play clock was only at 10 seconds, so that wasn't an immediate concern. That leaves the Steelers with only one timeout remaining. Uh, that was a surprising call. He may, have been, he may have been confused about what they wanted, but you want to let that clock run down. You don't want to let the other guy have very much time. Uh, and the, now that if they do score, Detroit's going to get the ball back with two minutes to go, and they have all three timeouts. Again, we remind you that this is doubleheader day here on CBS, and no matter which one of the two games in the docket you're going to see, you're going to see a good one. 
It's either the Rams at Dallas, the Cowboys own the league's best record at 8 and 1, or New Orleans at San Francisco and the Saints and 49ers in a flat footed tie for first place in the NFC West. That's coming up as soon as we're finished here in Pittsburgh with the Lions and the Steelers. Wayne Fonts in possession of a four point lead, but it's tenuous at best at the moment. Second and goal from the one. 2.54 to play. Their tendency has been to run towards Cooper, who's over on their right side. Let's see if they stay with that. They're going away from it. Play action fake. Wide open touchdown. Tim Jordan puts Pittsburgh back on top. Foster, look at Jordan kind of just sneak out. He doesn't try to pretend. He's just running out there. Nobody bothers to cover him. Touchdown. First touchdown of the season for Jordan. Anderson's extra point is good. And that gives Pittsburgh a three-point lead at 17-14 with 2.50 remaining. And Neil O'Donnell congratulates Bobby Brister. Here's a blitz off the corner. No one is playing pass defense, and that's fairly obvious. <laughs> and Jordan says, hey, throw me the ball, and I got it. I'm sure as that ball was spiraling to him, he's saying, oh, baby, please catch this one. But they left a lot of time on that clock. They got a great break, and they took advantage of it. The only way that they really stopped Detroit was when they went to the blitzing game. Mm -hmm. When Detroit had the ball late in this last series, they blitzed them every time. And on the last play, they blitzed off the corners with the two, with Woodson and Lake, and that got them the ball back. Now with 250, we'll see if they have the kind of courage that, uh, that allows them to stay with that. And if Detroit is prepared to pick up that kind of blitz, if Pittsburgh is willing to do it. That was the first touchdown pass of the season for Bubby Brister in the 50th of his career. He's fifth on the all-time touchdown pass list in Steeler history. Beats five to catch Mark Malone. They could use a terrific return from Mel Graham. They don't get it. He's down short of the 20-yard line at the 18. Jason Hansen does have a strong leg if you're thinking about a game-tying field goal for Detroit, but they have a long way to go to get him into field goal range. They have plenty of time. They have, in essence, including the two-minute warning, four timeouts. So moving the football is the key, and they don't need too many big chunks. They just need to consistently move it. Eric Kramer, in his first start of the season, Trying to bring the Lions back from a three-point deficit. There was movement along the offensive line. Lomas Brown, check that. Scott Conover, the right tackle, appeared to come out of his stance early. Again, the noise and the pressure starts getting to you. You know that they're coming fast. Greg Lloyd was lined up there outside and ready to go. 76, offense. Conover just couldn't wait. Pittsburgh, I think, is doing a good thing here. They, whether they're blitzing or not, they're up there showing it, and it's making it uh, the a certain toll on the offensive pass blocking schemes. You have to account for people, and that's when that's when the illegal procedures and the uncertainty starts happening. First and 15. Watch them fake the blitz now. Walk, look, in, look at them up there. They're not blitzing, but they are faking it. Kramer had time to throw it behind Sanders. In defense of this Detroit offensive line which has been beleaguered all year long there have been times when they've given Kramer time to at least unload it if not put it on target and he has not been particularly sharp today and that's very true and and in fact the time that you know that what appears to be the deciding play on the end zone was not on, on the last series was not the offensive line it was a blitz off the corner where the protection didn't pick it up mm -hmm. or the or the quarterback if he was in charge of, of you know being responsible for it didn't see it here again look how they're up there faking the blitz they're coming they're coming Woodson trying to get in from the corner he was picked up and it's on the money Herman Moore with a
a first down for the Lions out to the 32 yard line a gain of 18. Well a good job Detroit they had the pass blocking system to pick it up you'll see Lake, uh, Lake come watch Barry Sanders stop pick Lake up there enough to get it it's man to man coverage and Kramer puts the ball on the money. Fourth catch of the day for Herman Moore. Last play before the two minute warning Kramer again with plenty of time on the money first down Detroit to the 45 yard line fifth catch of the day for Herman Moore and that takes us to the two minute warning 159 to play and sold out three river stadium the Steelers up by three when it came time to sell the car I don't know why I guess I was sort of torn I mean we've been through a lot together still I decided to run an ad with what I thought was a fair price Next thing I know, I've got all these incredible offers. After a lot of thinking, I went with the lowest bid. Thanks, Dad. Things haven't been that great with Steve and me for a while, so it's not a total surprise. Believe me, it's a little scary being on your own now. You really need to start thinking about Funny, and I haven't begun to think about that. When I went through this, I sat down with a broker over at Payne Weber. He looked at what I had, and we came up with a plan that basically just let me get on with my life. And how did he know what you needed? Fortunately for me, he asked. Other laser printers have been playing leapfrog for years in a futile effort to catch up with the HP laser jet. Now they're truly up against it. Hewlett Packard introduces the HP laser jet 4, a new generation, a new standard to reach for. Good luck, fellas. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. Sean McDonough with John Robinson at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Steelers lead 17 to 14 in what is a very important game for them. They started the day with a one game lead in the AFC Central over Houston and Cleveland. Cleveland has already lost this afternoon to San Diego. 14 to 13 was the final in that one at Cleveland Stadium. Houston is not yet finished. First and 10 Lions at their own 45. Lake trying to come on a blitz was picked up. Sanders. That's one of the best two-yard runs you'll see, but then he lost the football. And they are going to roll a fumble recovered by Pittsburgh. Richard Shelton came up with it. That's the fourth lost fumble for the Lions today in their sixth turnover. The Steelers get it back at midfield. Here's the replay now. It, it looked like he lost it coming down. They're blitzing again. I, I'll tell you, the Pittsburgh defensive people were willing to take some, to take some risk. There's Barry Sandy changed direction. He did fumble the football. It's the right call. When you change directions that many times, you get hit from strange angles. The, the hit that knocks the ball loose is right there from Williams. Now they go to the ground with Foster. The Lions have three timeouts remaining. They'll use the first of those three after a four-yard gain. They make six turnovers. You're lucky you're only behind by three in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And, and they had something going. They had, they had done a good job against those blitzes, and I think we're, you know, in a position to, to continue to move the football. That's one of the great football players in this game. And I'm sure he feels a terrible burden right now uh, knowing that his mistake was the one that the final mistake but they've had plenty of them today but it's a Detroit team as coach Fonz told us this is a team that is unwilling to give up mm -hmm. and they certainly even though they're their own worst enemy and doing or using all the cliches keep shooting themselves in the foot they hang in there and fight and then that's a that's a uh, you know a comment about what our outstanding coach Wayne Fonz is he's going through some very tough times as soon as this one is over, we'll send you to either Dallas for their game with the Rams or San Francisco for the Niners game with the Saints. 
Minute 44 to play. The Steelers lead 17-14 on second and five. Foster stopped at the line of scrimmage and timeout called by Detroit with a minute 37 remaining. What a great play by Benny Blades that time. He went right through all of the, the blocking pattern and knocked Foster down for a two-yard loss. Tonight on CBS in New York City, they do well in school. The students? No, the custodians. They make more than the teachers. You're kidding? No, we're not. Watch 60 Minutes tonight. And it's Murder, she wrote, followed by the CBS Sunday movie, When No One Would Listen, starring Michelle Lee, James Ferentino, and Cicely Tyson. That's tonight on CBS. Eric Kramer might have another chance. Well, Eric Kramer's got that, you know, that when you're quarterback or the, or, or the coach and you're losing, nobody's going to sit next to you. I think he did a good enough job, uh, you know, to, to keep this club in the game despite those turnovers. That last turnover, we got the ball knocked loose from him. I don't think it was his fault. It was the organization of the protection that was faulty. Play action pass for Brister. Going deep on third and six. Now the Lions don't have to use the timeout. And they're going to punt are the Steelers with a minute 32 remaining. Well, that was a surprising call. Again, they could have they could have worked that worked them all the way down to no timeouts on that play, but they give them a little life. It seems like at the end of these halves, the other guy is trying to keep the opponent in the game. It's not been the best clocksmanship that I've seen in my career. They came after Royals. He got it off. Ray the fair catch. And that's a rarity. Mel made it at the 12-yard line. A 35-yard punt for Royals with no return. One last chance for the Lions with a long way to go. And that game just underway at Dallas, the Rams with the early 7 to nothing lead. Here, there's a minute and 25 remaining. First and 10 Detroit at its own 11 with the Steelers leading 17-14. Dallas has done so well. You know, they might just be set up for a, a, a surprise for them today. The Rams... Uh, had a really disappointing week last week, but they're a club, I think, this year that is willing to come back. Here now, this club has got to throw the ball into the middle, I think, try to find that deep end pattern to make first downs and keep this clock from running out on them. Four-man rush. Kramer hit as he threw. It's complete inbounds to Willie Green. The clock runs as Green made it out to the 17-yard line, about four yards shy of a first down. You're just not going to get enough yardage on those short out patterns uh, to, to, to get the, the kind of uh, movement that they need to get a chance to score. They need to throw the ball down the middle. They're going to have a chance to try to get up. Kramer into the middle, caught by Perryman. That'll move the chains with the first down. And the clock is running, 48 seconds remaining. Every second counts here. They've got to get lined up. He's going to kill the clock. Mm -hmm. There he does. He's got 40 seconds and a timeout. He needs at least a 20 or 30 yard gain. And in this kind of an environment, about the only place that that is is, a, is the crossing pattern in the middle. He's got to get enough protection to give somebody a time to get down and in the middle, catching it a little bit like the play that Green made uh, in the first half where he broke loose and was able to go down the sideline. That has to be the thought that they have. Either that or a screen to Barry Sanders where he can all by himself to um, you know make a miracle and get the football down the field but they do have that one time out where if they can make a couple of big plays they can set up a chance at a field goal second and ten after Kramer grounded it blitz Woodson Lake deflected it and it's an incomplete pass Woodson was coming again from Kramer's backside Lake was the man who got a hand on the ball. It's third down and ten. Tom Capers, the defensive coordinator, and Bill Cowers have a lot of courage. They are willing to come after you and go to their defensive personality, which is to come with those outside people no matter what. This man has done one of the great coaching jobs. If you're picking AFC Coach of the Year right now, I think you've got to go with this guy. And it looks like they may have dodged a bullet today and uh, kept themselves alive. We saw the Houston victory over Minnesota on the screen. Steelers need to win this to remain in sole possession of first place 
That's incomplete intended for Mike Barr. That'll bring up fourth and ten and obviously the Lions have to go for it with 31 seconds remaining. So Houston with the win 17 to 13 at Minnesota is six and four. Cleveland with the loss today against San Diego five and five. And the Steelers trying to hang on to this three point lead and go to seven and three and maintain their one game lead. Well it's really a game and a half over Houston because they have beaten Houston twice so they get uh, you know any kind of a tie would go to the Steelers. Last play of the game for Detroit unless they come up with the first down. Steelers come on the blitz. Pretty well picked up. Kramer has a man for a first down. Willie Green out of the 39 yard line with 25 seconds remaining. Well, Pittsburgh is proving its courage, but this blitzing every down in a two minute is getting a little ridiculous. I, uh, I think they are really uh, uh, gutsy people. Mm -hmm. and, and it has affected uh, Detroit. Detroit is not getting that ball thrown up the field like they have to. First and 10, the Lions at their own 39, running out of time. 25 seconds remaining, one timeout left. Kramer throws, caught at the midfield strike. Yeah, yeah. They'll mark the forward progress to the 50, but they do not stop the clock. 12 seconds left, and the Lions use their last timeout. A couple of extra seconds ran off the clock after the whistle sounded, but that play used a lot of time, 16 seconds. Well, I don't know how that how he could have kept that clock going. Just, he had lost his forward momentum. But he was moving towards the boundary. That's a that's a courageous call by that official. And uh, you can see Dan Henning looking at him while I say it. <laughs> I don't think it was courageous. I think it was wrong for Dan. But uh, that's what they have to deal with now. Here we get a look at the at the replay. He throws the ball. Green is coming back for it. Now, when is that clock going to stop? Mm. Oh, boy. He stepped out of bounds. But see, they marked him with the forward progress beyond the marker for a first down. So yeah. apparently they say he was stopped. Gave him the yardage, but at that time, Detroit would give up the yardage for the oh, stop. to keep to that the because now, now they're sitting with nine seconds. They've got to they've got to throw a deep out of some sort. To give Jason Hansen a chance. Yeah. If they would have been able to keep that time out, they could have again thrown the ball in the middle, taken time, and got a field goal up. So that was very pivotal for them there. I think they also lost a couple of seconds on the stoppage of the clock. The whistle seemed to be blowing with about 12 seconds left. Oh, well, that will help unless Aaron Jones was drawn off, and he was not. Defense. Certainly a help to the Lions. Five-yard pickup gets them to the Steeler. 45. Jones is just going to come here. I, and he knows. He knows. This has been a day of mistakes for both teams. Uh, and, and it seems like the mistakes inside the two minutes, both in the first half and here, have compounded themselves. And uh, it's, not a, it's not been a pretty game from that standpoint. This game is almost whoever's going to make the last mistake is going to lose. Looked like movement in the Detroit offensive line, and there was. They're coming in to stop the play. Looked like the right side of the line moved. It did. And they return the favor and go back to the 50. This really is a fitting ending to this game, although the second half has been much more well played than the first from a penalty standpoint. Well, it's been exciting, but uh, what is the record for the most penalties in one game? Do you know that, John? We get our staff uh, working on it. 18 penalties. For the two teams today, 10 by Pittsburgh and 8 by Detroit for a combined 166 yards. But they had combined for 14 penalties at the break, so the pace is slow. They put the clock back to 9 seconds. 17-14 Pittsburgh. No timeouts left for Detroit. They need about 15 and out of bounds. And that one is incomplete. Four seconds left. That would have been 15 yards that Green handled it, but the defender, Sammy Walker, had a much better shot at it than Willie Green did. 
Well, Sammy Walker did the thing that he had to do. He had to prevent that ball being thrown in by, I mean, thrown on the sidelines with the, the chance to step out of bounds with any more time. This has to be a touchdown here mm -hmm. or else they're going to lose the game. There just isn't enough time for two plays. back on the 10-yard line. He has a man open! Perryman with the catch! But time expires as Perryman goes down to the 19. Had he hit Perryman on stride where he didn't have to go to the ground, Perryman had room to run toward the end zone. But Kramer underthrew it slightly. Perryman had to go to the turf for the catch. And Bill Cower ekes out another win. For John Robinson, Sean McDonough saying so long from Three Rivers Stadium, the final score, Pittsburgh 17, Detroit 14. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after these words from your local station. This royal throne of... No. Defensive back was there, so he read that, and then he went inside. Todd read it also and got him the football. Good shot, good coverage by our, our camera crew. Here's Johnny Lamb Jones. Well, he's really improved. You know that the last, last year. First down, Jets are on 35. McNeil tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Still. Picks up two, maybe three yards will mark it to the 38. Glenn Cameron got a hand on his ankle. Well, that's second te 17. That right. tells it. That tells the ball game. Let's go defense. I'm talking on both sides because both of these offense are moving the football. For the New York Jets, they've yet to punt. And there's been a change at defensive right cornerback. Ken Riley has been replaced by number 25, John Simmons. Simmons in his second year played his collegiate ball at SMU. Second down, seven. 38-yard line, gets their own territory. 15 seconds left in the third. 30-second clock. The of the game, number 14. That'll cost New York five. Takes it back to the 33, and it'll be second down and 12. Can't afford those kind of mistakes. No, you side. cannot. Not in this kind of a ball game. They've got 25 John Simmons in the ball game. 44 Ray Griffin is also in the ball game. So the starters are out right now. Riley and Breed. And we had mentioned at the top of the show this was a concerning category or area for the Cincinnati Bengals, the secondary. And Mike Fuller has replaced Brian Hicks. Only Bobby Kemp are the starters. Is there the secondary? Todd goes deep. Pass is complete to Derek Gaffney. And now on the return, it is Mike Fuller with the ball. Fuller out of bounds at the 35. Just a moment ago, the sign 
defense. And this is it. Gaffney makes a fine reception. Good throw by Todd. And here comes Kip. He makes the hit. Pops the ball loose. 42 is Fuller. Grabs it up. A big, big turnover for the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. New Chrysler Corporation, where low financing and long protection helps make car buying easier. By Xerox, advancing office productivity worldwide. And by Hertz, the car rental company that's number one for everyone. We start the fourth and final quarter. We'll wind up the season for one of these teams. The winner to go on, the loser goes on. 23-17, Jeff Street after three. Cincinnati is the ball at the New York 34-yard line. First down. Anderson drops it off to Pete Johnson. And Pete struggles to about the 25. He'll have nine. It'll be second down and one. Now, a moment ago, the pass of the New York Jets. Did the receiver have possession? That was a question that we asked. We took a look, and the receiver did have possession. Here it is. This is regular speed now. Todd going back to Gaffney. Both hands on the ball. His feet come down. He takes a good pop by Kemp. Ball is shaken loose, and 42 Fuller comes up with it. And right now, they're on about the 25-yard line. There was possession. Another excellent call by the officials on a very quick happening. Pete Johnson is trying to pick up the first down. He needed a yard. I'm not sure that he got it. Let's see where the officials spot the ball. Ken Troy leading the defense. Walt Michaels, the head coach of the Jets. Boy, this has been a good ball game. The kind of ball game that you would expect from the Cincinnati Bengals and the New York Jets. And the intensity that's being played with. There is hitting going oh. on the field. Really intense hitting. It'll be third down, about half a yard for the first down. They're bringing in a two more tight ends. They'll have three tight ends in the ball game. I look, they've got to go. If they don't make it now, I would think that Forrest Gregg would, They'll would go, go for it. For it on They'll fourth go for it. Two running plays. Three tight end, Ross, Harris, Holman. Cincinnati trails by six. Oh, what a hit. What does that change then? Kenny Neal. If the Jets win, that could be the play of the game. Now you go for the field goal. You do now. You do now because of this man, Kenny Neal. He really shot through there. Here he comes. No, nobody touched him. They tried to get position on him. Andy, uh, Anthony Munoz, number 78, tried to get position on him. By the time he did that, Neal was long gone. There he is. He makes the hit on the big fullback about three or four yards deep in the backfield. From the 36-yard line, an attempt of 46 yards. Mike Fuller to hold. Reach of four of seven over 40 yards. It is no good. It is no good. He misses from 46 yards out. That is the first field goal that has been missed in the ball game. He had hit from 20. Pat Lee has hit three times. Jets lead it. 23-17. We'll be back in a moment. Hamstring over the last three games, they had isolated it into a small area, and this is the way they did it. Yeah, I asked him how they got it, how they reduced it to about an inch or two, and they said by massaging it. You can see what some people will do to play this game. He's playing in a lot of pain. Just now from the 28-yard line, that was the line of scrimmage for Cincinnati when they missed the field goal. As we brought briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV. New York. You just saw Freeman McNeil go for six yards on the play. It'll be second down and four. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, New York 23, Cincinnati 17, the margin six with 12 minutes, 18 seconds left to go in the ball game. The winner here continues on in the Super Bowl tournament. For the loser, it is the end of the season. On the draw, Maybe a yard, and that would be about it for Bruce Harper. Reggie Williams, the first man there. Now let's go to New York City. Another update. What's happening between Pittsburgh and San Diego? We'll find out together. 
All right, in Pittsburgh's Three River Stadium, the Chargers have finally solved Terry Bradshaw. Here he gets out of the pocket. He's looking for Lynn Swan. Instead, he is intercepted by number 27, Jeff Allen. The Chargers now have a chance to get a little bit closer. They trail 28-17. And here Cincinnati trails 23-17. Now we've got a timeout, so let's take a break. Third down and four, 34 yard line. Cincinnati will go now with a three man rush, is what they show. The linebackers in tight. Jets converted three of six, third down opportunity. Bruce Harper, the remaining back, he's there as a receiver. Harper over the middle, he's got it to the 50. And then down at the 48-yard line. Was that a hamstring yes, that brought him down? Yes, yes. He went down uh, because of the leg problem. And here he's hobbling off the field. He did make an outstanding catch. Good, soft touch by Richard Todd throwing the ball over a linebacker. 19-yard reception. There it is. Excellent throw to, to Harper. You're going to see him pull up right now. He goes down. Right Look, he grabs his leg. It's the uh, left, left, side. left side of his... So, hamstrings been a real problem for the New York Jets. You saw a little while ago that uh, Marty Lyons was being massaged on the sideline for a hamstring injury. First down, Cincinnati 47 yard line. 11 minutes left to go. Freeman McNeil. Oh, he's something else. 5'11, now 212 pounds. Before the season, his head coach, Walt Michael, said, you lose 12 pounds, and you can lead the league in rushing, and you'll go to the Pro Bowl. He said, I didn't believe it. <laughs> he but he led the now. league in rushing, and he's going to the Pro Bowl. Now, now here's uh, Harper on the sidelines. He does not, he looks like he's in pain. Here's a, it's a counter play. Number 60 is Alexander coming out, throwing a block on the linebacker. That provided the opening that, that the McNeil needed, and that's all he needed. Freeman Picked McNeil. 173 yards rushing at 17 wow. carries. This is his best game. Also, remember, he threw a touchdown pass. And we've got fly. As we await the decision, we'll go to New York. Thank you, Charlie Jones, the San Diego Chargers. Well, color them, never say die. Here, Dan Fouts on fourth down finds Kellen Winslow in the end zone. And now the Chargers trail the Steelers by four, 28-24 in the fourth quarter. Charlie? Well start, first down. Well start, it'll be first down and 15. McNeil. Quick opener right up the middle. Give some credit to that line. Ward, Waldemar Fields, Alexander Powell. Start adding up the yardage. I mean, you just gave the statistics of this man, Freeman McNeil, having the best game ever. Look at the hole there provided by the offensive line. And you just mentioned the players. Fields, Waldemar, Alexander, Powell, and Ward. Both of these offensive lines, Cincinnati and the Jets, both outstanding. Freeman McNeil now rushing 182 yards. Second and four. Glenn Cameron with the tackle. Matt Snell held the jet rushing record. What was it? I don't know, but our producer, Ken Edmondson, who just passed that information on, I'm sure has that. Because McNeil now... 180, and he just went past 180. 187 yards, and there on his way to 200, still with nine minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Third down one. Augustiniak, everybody carried him back. Including Reggie Williams had the football, but the play was blown down. I believe he made it. I think his surge was good enough to, to pick up the first down.
Straight ahead. Nothing fancy here. As you see the offensive line, 65 field, 60 Alexander. They've got him stopped now. He's looking at Reggie Williams. That's what you that's what you must do. That's the object of the game. When the other players defensively have the man stop, you go for the football. And here's the measurement. It's there. First down, New York. Now we'll keep an eye on the clock. Nine minutes and 35 seconds. That's a lot of time, but it can get away from you in a hurry. Well, they've got a six-point lead, three points. Very, very big. What they do not want to do, the Jets, they do not want to turn the ball over. And, of course, on the other side, what the Bengals want to do, they want that turnover. Cincinnati needs the football. They need to stop the Jets now. They shut down Freeman McNeil here. He'll lose a yard to the 27. It'll be second down and nine. I credit two players on that. Wilson Whitley, the nose tackle, number 75, got great penetration. Ross Browner also came slashing in there, and that, that stopped Freeman McNeil, and that's something that they really haven't been able to do all day. A new jet rushing record for Freeman McNeil. Oh, he looks good. He looks good. And uh, to the dismay of this man, Forrest Gray. Second down. and 11. Screen pass. 81, Derek Gaffney. Quick screen right side. So, the big Marvin Powell, 79, showing the, you know, the versatility of these big, big linemen, Marvin Powell, getting out in front. He's got to go from his tackle position, go out and knock out a cornerback. Here it is, a quick screen, number 79. How'd you have this? If you're a cornerback, have this big guy <laughs> coming down your throat with a full head of steam. 20-yard line, third down and four. Bobby Kemp, Jim LeClaire there for the defense. First down, 10-yard line, five-yard line, touchdown. Freeman McNeil from the 20-yard line is now over 200 yards. Charge, you notice on that play, Cincinnati sent either three or four defensive men into uh, the lineup, and Richard Todd went on a quick count, and the defense was moving around. They really, they weren't set. Here it is. Good blocking. We're talking about the offensive line. 60 is Alexander. Good block. Waldemore making a good block. Durking a good block downfield. Nobody touched him. The point is good. The New York Jets now with 8.24 left to go as you watch Freeman McNeil go into the end zone. The Jets lead by 13 as Freeman McNeil now has 206 yards. Be able to do very well, throw the football. That's right, he's also thrown for a touchdown in this ballgame. So now the Jets lead by 13 with 8.24. Time beginning to tick away on Cincinnati. They've got to get something going here. There's Rodney Tate on the return. And Tate gets something going as he returns across the 30-yard line. Could be the spark that Cincinnati needs. 22 yards in the return by the rookie from the University of Texas. Cincinnati from their own 31-yard line first down. You know, Charlie, you, you mentioned something when we were analyzing these two teams, and that was the running game. Yes. And it's really bearing out that the running attack of the New York Jets. Big difference in this ball game. Anderson going deep, college work. 